said, I'm going to take us back to another place. We don't want to go back. We want to go forward. One of my favorite, uh, third, one of my favorite quotes uh, from Dr. Martin Luther King. I have a dream that one day my four little children rise up in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, by the content of their character. Amen. And Father, I said, I still have a dream. Amen. And uh, because of those dreams and those legacies, amen, we can fellowship together. Amen? Amen. 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 So let us, amen, greet each other. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Amen. And this is the day the Lord has made, amen. Let us rejoice and be glad in as we sing some worship this morning. Help us out. Right here, I'm talking about has the answer. 
just talk to your friend when you need him. He's like, if you think you got to talk to him all the time if you want to get to know him. Don't just call me when you need him. Call me when you want to say thank you because I've done something for you. Call me when you just want to hang out with me. You want to be a real here. And I want God in my heart. I want to be in his presence. I like him because I like to be around So I'm going to tell you the day through praise and worship. Holla at your boy.
Some are in a ditch. Some are on a mountain. God, you are able to be us where we are, God. Yes. So God, me and my friends, we're different, but we're the same. Yes. We stand in need of a mighty, mighty God. A God who is willing to stretch out his arm and offer salvation. Yes. To offer deliverance. To offer healing and a friendship. Yes. God, I don't know that I'll ever understand that you want to be friends with your people, God. So God, not only our friend, our father, our protector, our deliverer, yes. Yes. our high tower, our high priest. Yes. God, you are all those things. You have so many roles and functions, God, and we only know you a little. God, forgive us, God. Forgive us for the times that we walk right on past you, God. Forgive us for not spending that time with you to talk to you, to spend that time with you, God. Forgive us, God. And God, you're that loving God. Your love endures forever. Your grace and mercy follow us all the days of our life, God. So let's dip into that grace and mercy today, God. And, and accept that forgiveness that you offer so freely to us, God. Let us stand before you free.
last night, uh, it was probably about nine o'clock, and we had just finished eating dinner. Many of us were full, uh, stuffed beyond measure, and as we were uh, sitting around the last uh, section of the night, the last uh, breakout uh, was truly the definition of the word breakout. Um, I didn't know how it was going to work, but I felt the Lord pressing in my spirit when I woke up yesterday morning to add a third session. And that third session was going to be a time of consecrated prayer before the Lord. And it would be a time that we would spend just praying and worshiping. And I didn't know how it was going to look, how it was going to go, because sometimes when you're sitting around a room and you just begin praying, it can become a little awkward. And then sometimes it feels kind of forced. You ever been in those situations where you're sitting in a room and you start praying and sometimes it just feels like we're forcing ourselves to do this, but it just doesn't feel right. But that was not the case on last night. And last night when we heard the first worship song and I began to pray after that, something happened in that room. And, I, and when it happened in that room, I believe every person in that room felt it. And the Holy Spirit began to work and the Holy Spirit began to move. And I believe that birth today's message, and today's message is entitled, Taking the Authority That God Has Given You Back. I believe, amen, that the body of Christ, we spend so much time just caving and just maintaining. We spend time maintaining and not trying to offend or hurt feelings. And in that place of maintaining, I believe that we begin to lose ourselves and we start settling for God's second best. Okay. When we start to just get to a place, I'm, I'm thinking of when you were talking, Paul, about that word uh, 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 recharging. And I believe sometimes when, when, George, we look at those battery chargers and we, we, we get a, a battery, a car battery that dies, we put a battery charger on it. But then there's something that switches once it gets full. It's called maintaining. Mm -hmm. And once we get full, sometimes we just learn to start maintaining and not actually tapping into the overflow which God has for the body of Christ. We, we get used to just saying this is how it is and this is how it's going to be. But we miss sometimes the extra that God wants to give us because we don't tap into the authority that God has given us. And I believe the reason why the church does not tap into the authority which God has given us is because sometimes it's uncomfortable. Go ahead. And not only is it uncomfortable, but sometimes it, it feels a little different and sometimes it feels like I'm the only one. So it's just easier, LT, just to fit in. It's, it's easier just to fit in. But do you know that you are not accessing all that God has for you when you're just fitting in? Well, Pastor, what do you say? We are operating at half mass. The church is operating. We have become comfortable. We can pray a prayer. We can spend 45 minutes in worship. We can spend 15 minutes preaching the word. And we can spend 10 minutes at the altar. And then we walk out the doors. Go ahead. It becomes a routine. Go ahead. But when the oil gets out of it, yes. it gets a little uncomfortable now. Because, Pastor, what are you going to do with that? There's, there's something that invokes his presence here. We, we talked about the word invoking last night. And when we bombard the doors of heaven and we invoke the presence of God, when we open the door and say, God, here is your space, come in and do what you want to do with it. It feels weird sometimes because something starts to tingle on the inside. Something starts to work and something starts to move and you start asking questions, what is going on? And before you know it, tears start flowing. Before you know it, things start happening that you can't explain in the natural. So let's look at the scripture just for a second. Christina, I think when you came up here, you started messing my computer up. Who's <laughs> <laughs> cutting off? They're going to go on anyhow. Luke 10, it says this in verse 17. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And in verse 19, it says, I have given you authority 
to trample on snakes and scorpions, and to overcome all the power of the enemy, nothing will harm you. There's a lot in that statement, but I, I get confused on the words, nothing, George, will harm us. I, I, I get stuck on that a little bit. Because he says he's given us authority over all that stuff that runs on the ground. And he said, nothing, nothing will harm us. He said, however, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven, which tells me we must be a believer. I was passing through some more scriptures uh, this morning, and I was passing through some scriptures uh, even last night after we finished praying, and after last night we, we sat around for a little longer, and I was in the kitchen, and I sat down, and I was browsing through my phone, and a lot of times I'll just browse Facebook, but I started browsing through some stuff. And as I was browsing through some stuff, several scriptures began to hit me, Paul. And several stories began to hit me. And we were talking, and I reminisced a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about the man in the graveyard. And when we were focusing on the man in the graveyard, as long as he was bound up, people weren't scared of him. But as soon as he was unchained, it intimidated God's, it intimidated the people. I began to browse more scriptures, and this is going to make sense in about 30 more seconds. I was browsing some more scriptures, and in Acts, the 16th chapter, I was scrolling down. As I was scrolling down in Acts 16, it was talking about Paul and Silas. It's, it's interesting to me that when they were thrown into the jail cell, there was no change that took place amongst the whole jail cell. It wasn't until they began to invoke God's presence by singing that something started to happen. When, when, when those that are Bible scholars, those that know this story, what are the first things that took place in that passage when they began to sing? There was a rattle, and then it says, what took place? The shackles, the chains fell on. What, what is it about people wanting to shackle and chain down God's people? There are, there are several instances in the Bible where God's people are chained down in a chapel. The three Hebrew boys, when they were thrown in the fire, they were bound up. Why are people tying God's people up? When it talked about the ox and the yoke, they said it was a yoke. What is a yoke? Chain goes one to the next. What is it made for? To bound and to control the ox. Something that's not meant to be controlled. What, what is the purpose here of chaining and bounding God's people? My girl, my dad, boy, I knew. She said I was her brother. She said I was her son. She said I was her friend. Boy, we were connected right did y'all hear what she said? She said to take the authority. And do you know what has happened with the church? Good God Almighty. She said when she was talking about me yesterday, that's my big brother, my baby brother, my friend. She connected to me. Well, I remember this word. <laughs> power, power. We have given it away. We have given the authority that God has given the church away. And we have learned to operate being, ch being chained and bound up. I, I did a demonstration when we were at uh, the Spanish church uh, in Manio where I sat in a chair and chains were all over me. And I was tied down and I was shackled down. And don't get me wrong, the chains are heavy. Mm -hmm. When they first go on, they're heavy. But something happens about 15 minutes into those chains becoming heavy. They start to become, I start to get used to the weight. And after about an hour, I learned to adapt and adjust. You know, when I first got on all Paris, I couldn't quite move. But eventually, I learned to.
to get into a comfortable position. I, I learned to, I still had a voice. I learned that, man, if I had an itch or a scratch, I could use the chains in my advantage. And I could use the chains to help me scratch. I could use the chains to help me get the itch. If, if, if I needed, you know, to adjust myself, I may even be able to use a chain to get my back a little bit better, a little bit more adjusted. We get comfortable using the chains in our advantage. Mm -hmm. We get used to moving with the chains and the weight on us. Mm -hmm. We get used to being able to talk and to pray with a chain on us. Yes. We get used to being able to encourage people with chains on us. We get used to being able to say, I know God can, I know He will, but the chains are still holding God's people. Preach. Yes. That's right. But can I tell you that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. indeed. When we can learn that when the chains come off, they are. Mm, 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 mm. Kirk Franklin sang a song a long time ago. Anybody know what it was? Take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. <laughs> Well, y'all ever see Paul bring on to a dance? Take him off my even dance. When we are free, we have the opportunity to move into the ways and into the things of God. Yes. Hallelujah. The reason why it feels uncomfortable is because we've gotten comfortable with the chains on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I, 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 when I was coaching basketball, Nehemiah went to that face for a little while. Basketball players would get used to, they wanted to be able to get ups. They wanted to learn how to dunk. So basketball players would start putting ankle weights on their feet. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of the ankle weights is to walk around with pressure on your feet. So when the pressure comes off, you can get up a little bit higher. Yeah. And so the basketball players would walk around practice, they would practice with those ankle weights on. And then before long, when they came off, their feet felt light as feathers. Mm -hmm. And, and God's people need to experience what it feels like to walk light as feathers. Yes. Look, our blood pressures are yes. up, diseases are up, sicknesses are plaguing the church because we're walking around with too much pressure. Yes. But when we can use the authority that God has given us, He said, I've given you the authority to trample over the scorpions. I've given you the authority to speak to a situation. He tells you, be careful what you speak, because the power of life and death fall in the tongue. That's right. And there are times when God challenges us when we learn what we should speak. When we were looking at Ezekiel in the 37th chapter, God said, Ezekiel, what do you see when you look out there? And in the first 10 or 15 seconds, Ezekiel sees with his natural eyes, I see nothing but death. I see nothing but bad stuff. But then God said, now prophesy to it. That's right. What does that mean to the church? Speaking in such a way that even if you haven't seen it in Hebrews 11 and 1, even though it hasn't happened, Hebrews 11 and 1, speak it. Yes. That's the authority that God has commanded the churches to have. So look at your current situations. Look at what you're going through. Look at what your family's going through. Have we been operating at half mass and just going through the motions? Look at the part. We can sing the part, can't we? We can look the part. The weight has been heavy. That's right. And God has told us in scriptures, cast your burdens. Take those chains and cast. See, when we did something Friday night, with toilet paper. That's <laughs> 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 Yeah, we didn't do it white. <laughs> 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 but I set the group up. I said, grab the toilet paper, grab as much as you need. And Lenny grabbed uh, like eight to ten squares, and some grabbed two or three, and some grabbed, you know, five or six <laughs> squares. And for every square, I told them to tell us something about themselves. Okay. So some had to tell a lot, and some had to tell a little bit. 
And you know, repeatedly around the room as the weekend went on, they said, oh, I probably should have said this instead That's of that. Right. Mm -hmm. I probably should have said this mm -hmm. instead of that. Mm -hmm. Do you know that when the maker of that toilet paper started, it started with one square? And gradually the roll got bigger before it was purchased for consumer use. Uh -huh. Do you know that when chains start, they start with one loop? They start with one loop. And gradually, that chain adds a second loop, and a third loop, and a fourth loop. And then when that chain gets to the place where you look at it and you're like, how did I end up here? You, you ask yourself that question because when Luke 1 first appeared, Luke 1, you could put it in your pocket and it didn't really have any weight to it. But by the time we got to this place where now I've got 10 loops, that 10th loop going in my pocket will no longer fit. Right. So even when I start to go through the motions of life because I've learned how to use that chain as a belt to hold my pants up, somehow when I get 15 to 20 loops on that chain and it starts to drag, now do I pay attention and now am I like, how did I get here? Did I get to this place? Thank you, Lord. Do you want to hear me out? Hear me go, out. Ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. They're called links. Oh my God. They're called <laughs> links. Link to link means relationship, connection. They're building off of one another. That's right. That's right. That's right. They don't stand alone. They don't stand alone. They link. That's right. We are legions. Yes, we are. Oh. We are regimented. We are organized. They are. That's right. That's we have a relationship with each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We we form together. We are not unorganized. When they come, they come correct. That's the Good God, I'm out of here. Boy, you about to mess me up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do here. We, we, we try to process and help you live free today. Right. But living free, we got to understand, people of God, that you have authority. Yes. You know, when a cop puts a uniform on, they are still without authority until they take the oath. That's right. When they take the oath, the law supports now what they say. Mm -hmm. So when the blue lights come on, your heart flutters and you stop the car. When you pull, or some people try to run. Lucky but die But the military gentlemen, when you put that uniform on and you stand at attention with your unit or your brigade, you now have the authority of the U.S. government. So why, when we give our hearts to Christ, why, when we learn who we are in Christ, do we not put on the same authority? You know, the training school, the cops are good for there's a training school that military guys have to go through mm -hmm. to learn how to use the authority. Mm. We, we sit here in training school. Mm. Yes. We sit here in training boot camp. And at some point we have to graduate and get to a place where our gifts are activated. Yes. Go ahead, and when activation takes place, authority has to accompany that. I don't want to get too far with you so please follow me here. The church, we look and we see, I keep going back to sicknesses across the church. But what does the scripture say about sickness? Every Right, he took. Yes. Go ahead. Every single one of them might take it. For our healing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He already took the pain so we wouldn't have to bear it. Yes. So why are we not using that authority to remind God? He said, mm -hmm. remind, bring, put these things in my remembrance. Yes. Remind him of this. 
bring it back to his remembrance. That's part of that relationship thing with him. When my kids hear the words, we're going to take you to the store. <laughs> and 20 minutes have passed. And we ain't made no motions to go to the vehicle. Do you think they're not going to bring it back to our remembrance? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Would you like that? Yeah. Hey, are you ready to go? Mommy, are you ready to go? Mom, hey, mom, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> and that's what we should be doing to God. Yes. yes. Hey, God, you remember you said, in your word. hey, God, your word said, hey, hey look, I look, you're wrong. It's me and you again. Yes. This is how we and him talk. When I'm in my car, hey, brother. Amen, brother. Hey, hey, look, hey, look, 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 look. You promised me. Whew. I'm standing on the promise seal, and I ain't seen it. God, I'm trying to be patient, but I just want to bring this back to your remembrance. Whew. This is good stuff right here. And, and that's how that's how I communicate with him. And I feel like we have a close enough relationship because we spent time. But I understand when I feel like, uh-oh, he's ready to get irritated with me. I better come back and walk away for a while. I know it's coming when it's coming. Because we communally dine with each other. We need to communicate and, come and converse with the Lord the same way. And he will begin to talk to us and show us how to use the authority that's been placed in our laps. So let's go back to that word authority. What are some changes that we need to see? in our lives. Let's talk personal lives. What are some things you need God to do for you internally first? Let's talk about you first before we talk about your family. Mm. Because your foundation has to be set. What do you need God to do for you? Let's talk about your faith. Increase your faith. Let's talk about healing your body. Let's talk about fixing the things that you struggle with. We we had some intimate times this past weekend, and I won't dare put anybody's business out there, but when we were talking about things about each other, man, we spoke some things that we struggled with growing up. We struggled with as adults. We struggled with as God's people, but we took authority over those things, and we commanded that they shall not have authority over our lives anymore. And when we can start to speak those things over us, and ask God to move in us, then I can say, God, now move in my church. Yes. Now, God, move in my family. Yes. Now, God, remove generational curses from yes. my family. Because they were first removed from me. Mm -hmm. That part. I may be the chain link that needs to be broken first. Mm -hmm. Break me, God, before you start breaking the chains off of my family. It takes spiritual growth. I don't have my phone. I, it takes spiritual growth to be able to speak to yourself. Break me. Mm. I was listening to something T.D. T. T. Jakes said earlier. I'm going to finish with this. T.D. Jakes, when I was in the office, I was listening. He was talking about the grape. <coughs> and he said, grapes are wrapped in skin. Mm -hmm. He said, the skin is irrelevant when it comes to making wine. He said, but you have to go through that to get to the good stuff. There are times where we have to go through the outer surface to get to the good stuff that God has on the inside of yes. us. That's right. So when you look at me, you're looking at an outer shell, but you're not seeing the good stuff that God is stirring Amen. and God is working on the inside of us. So if I need God to crush that grape in me to get to the good stuff, <laughs> crush me, Lord, yeah. so that I can now learn to use the authority that you've given me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was going to tell you that I had some more feet up this morning. Happened to who? Didn't have in front of me. Sorry, sorry.
She got a lot. She wants to get out of there. Not a money. We sit around the breakfast table and ask Ann to preach, and Ann, or Ann, and the pray. She starts praying like everybody in the stop and look. Now she want to preach too. That's all right. Now give the Lord a hand on praise, y'all. Let's 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 remember. I love our relationship that we can jump each other like that. Um, but man, that, that hit me hard last night and this morning that it's time for us to use some of the authority that God has given us, man. And um, stop. I just keep hearing that word, stop living half mad. Stop living half suit and half cop. We, we've been living half cop, man. And, and I believe that, you know, those of you might know anything about guns, if you leave a gun half cop, it'll jam up on you every time. That's right. If you know anything about a gun, if you try to cop that thing halfway and leave it alone, it's going to jam up every time. So when you need it, it ain't going to work. That's right. But I need the authority because I'm half cocked. Ain't gonna work. But when I can use the authority that God gives me, and I stay loaded, and I stay cocked, and I stay ready. <laughs> iron sharpens iron. We heard that yesterday. If I need to speak into your life today, God knows we'll speak into your life. Because it's time for the church to use the authority. The church, the church, the church to use the authority. We just talked earlier. The whole purpose of people being chained up in those scriptures we used earlier is because they were trying to take the authority and control. But God is saying, this is the hour, this is the season, church, take it back. Yes. Paul and Silas were an amazing example. They started to invoke the presence of God. And when they invoked God's presence, look what happened. Even those who had authority over them submitted. Whew. When we look at Paul, when we look at the three Hebrew boys in the Bible, when they invoked God's presence in that fire, what happened? Jesus showed up with them. Time and time again, he will show up right when we need him. Is that all right? Yes, sir. Come on, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. All hearts and minds clear. Amen. Thank you for helping me preach this word today. Y'all help me on this one. That's good. Whew. I love when I know it's an old time word when God is speaking to pilots and he's speaking to spots in the congregation and you just do nothing but feed right into that word. Amen. So I thank God for that. Amen. Man, God, I believe, is he's, he's called us. He's called us in this place, amen, to live better and be better. Use the authority he has given you in this hour. Amen. 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 So today, amen, we're going to begin to call in his presence again. We're going to begin to invite the Holy Spirit and let me first get a salvation call. That salvation call is easy. And it just simply says, if you've never given your heart to Jesus, today is the best day. Don't wait till tomorrow because tomorrow is not promised to any of us. If you look out amongst our community, death is appearing every day. But there's a God who's still waiting with his arms wide open. Come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He tells you to take that. He said he will take the yoke. You will learn of him. And he says it's easy. His burdens of life. Today in this place, you can just simply say, Lord, come into my heart. Save me. Lord, I have messed up in my life. But I need a Savior who died on the cross and beat the grave for me in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to know the heavenly host of angels began to rejoice in your favor. And God has stretched out his arm and he's welcomed you and written your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. Facebook, thank you guys for tuning in. God bless you. If there's something we can do, we'll pray for you. We pray that, we pray that this word hits you in a way that uh, it was supposed to hit you. We pray that it calls uncomfortable as we pray.